love how I love how my Western picture is so formal. It's like I thought I was going somewhere else. <laughs> that would get your butt kicked in a cowboy town, that outfit right there alone, I'm just telling you. I'd make it about five minutes and then someone else would be wearing that suit. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to be here, guys. Holly sends her love. She's unable to be with us. She had a procedure on Wednesday. Uh, everything went good. Everybody's been asking about that. Um, and um, she just wishes she could be here, but she says to send her love. Now, in my time, I've told a lot of jokes that were awesome. And I've told a lot of jokes that I thought were going to be awesome. <laughs> this happened on Wednesday. We're in pre-op. Anesthesiologist there, surgeon there. And she's having a hysterectomy. I said, uh, Doc, give it to me straight. Will she be able to run faster without a uterus? <laughs> That's a much better reaction than I got Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. at Memorial Mission Hospital, I can tell you that. But in my defense, I don't know if you've ever played a pre-op room. That's a tough crowd. <laughs> Everybody's anxious. Nobody's on enough drugs yet to laugh. I mistimed the drip with Holly. I thought this will be funny because she's going to be on drugs. <laughs> she was not on enough drugs. So I'm here to talk about sales this morning. <laughs> when Marcus Seta gave me that title, like sales mastery, I was like, oh no, that's like a lot to deliver, you know? And I started thinking about master, oh, like masters of the universe. Then I started singing a master P song. Then. I was like, wait, you're an adult now? Oh, master class. And I was like, I don't know if I can deliver that, but here's what I can promise I'll deliver. Mastery-ish. <laughs> I'll beat the heck out of ish. You know what I'm saying? If that's what you need, consider it done-ish, because I will deliver. I also named it that because it's better than the real title or what the real title should be, stuff I learned the hard way or potentially stole from others. That just doesn't look good on an agenda, you know what I'm saying? So here we go. All right, here's, here's what we got to agree to. Two rules we must agree to. Number one, anyone can be good at sales. You have to believe that. Anyone can be good at sales. We've got crazy diversity. I was thinking about me and my buddy Patrick Connors. We've been at this over two decades together. He has a rocket propulsion degree from Cornell University. I have a certificate of completion of the heating and air conditioning repair program from Southwestern Community College. We got any alums in the audience? We don't travel well this time of year. This is kind of our Super Bowl when the weather's cold, so. My buddy Patrick is neat and organized. We were at the cabin and I walked by Patrick in the bunk room and it's like I went to his viewing ahead of time. The sheet was nice tucked. I think he was wearing a dress shirt. <laughs> the next morning I'm like, there was nobody in this bed. It was so neat. My bed looks like a shark NATO got in a fight with an alligator NATO. And yet we both, my buddy Adam Katz was a teacher. Many teachers retired after having me. There's a broad diversity in the Alliance. <laughs> Anybody can sell. Can we agree to that? Yeah. All right, number two. We gotta to agree to this one too. Sales is fun. Yeah. It's the best. Sales is fun. Any other job is lame. My cousin, the accountant, always wants to share stories of his job. And I just am like, <laughs> Yeah, tell that real crazy story about how that one time in the break room there were 16 pieces of cake, but only 17 people, and oh, that was crazy. <laughs> and Bill said it was a 17G 18B form, and you had the 18C form. <laughs> crazy. You meet the craziest people in planet Earth selling. I love it. I still remember one time sitting at someone's kitchen table, and they're drinking boxed wine out of a styrofoam cup that I know is from a restaurant that closed 15 years prior. <laughs> And in my mind, I'm going, man, we shouldn't have thrown all that styrofoam away in the 80s. <laughs> I was like, I never would have met this person. 
I mean, I have sold a policy to a guy that didn't wear a shirt the entire time, but did find time to put a cowboy hat on. <laughs> That's off-putting anyway you slice it, you know what I'm saying? Sales is fun. Are we all on the same page? All right, let's get going. So here's what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to cover. First, we're going to cover persuasion principles. I'm going to go through seven principles that you can use to persuade. Now, we're talking in specific about sales, but these same things will work when you're recruiting. Why? Because it's persuasion. They'll work to get your family to go to the restaurant you want to go to and not the one they want to go to. They can be used to persuade. Does it make sense? So these are principles. So don't get caught in, I need an exact script. These seven things will help you. Here's the th next thing we'll talk about, the flow of an appointment. I have a very simple four-step flow that I promise you, if you put it into play, you will close more. You will absolutely close more. And then lastly, we're going to take all that and we're going to add some principles on the back side. I want to give you five quick things that will help you take it and perform at a higher level and continue to progress and perform at higher levels. Deal? All right, let's go. Persuasion principle number one, prepare and protect your heart. Number one thing, it's at the top of the list for the reason. When we go out without a prepared heart, we are putting ourselves already in a losing position. Already in a losing position. Why? It's an emotional sale. If you are not emotionally present and in the right emotional state, you're going to struggle to sell. But you got to prepare and protect your heart. Here's the first thing. Now, some of you guys, my heart goes out to you. You lost a parent growing up. I hate that for you. I did not lose a parent growing up. But both of us need to get to the same state when we go to sell. So as I'm heading to the field, here's what I picture. I picture what my life would have been like if one of my parents had died. Because I tell you what would have happened, we would have lost everything. We lost everything. Now, I would have ended up growing up in my grandmother's spare bedroom with my siblings and my remaining parent. That's what would have happened. It would have changed the whole arc of my life. And if you think I'm a little messed up now, Let's peer down that parallel universe where I grew up with Laverne Sparling. I miss my grandma, but man, eccentric does not begin to describe her time on earth. That would have been, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have met Holly. Does that make sense? I wouldn't have Tinsley, I wouldn't have Chandler. I mean, it's a whole, so you get your, can you see where you're getting your heart right? Because you've got to be there so you can speak through that energy, that emotional energy. Now, once we're there, you got to protect it. Have a playlist, a very specific playlist very specific playlist that you listen to while you're in the field. And, and think through not just the tone of the music, think through the lyrics. Take zero chances with this. If you're listening to the radio, you're probably gonna end up in negativity. I was coaching a guy one time and he was struggling closing. He would book an appointment, they'd be there, but he couldn't close anything. Well, here's what I found out. He was listening to angry political talk radio the whole time he's in the field. So guess what? He shows up at their door and how does he look? Pissed off. Now, generally speaking, in a survey I did, most people prefer not to be around people that are pissed off. So he's coming to the door already at a loss. Does that make sense? Once we got that fixed, he started closing. Now, you might be more elevated than, than I. I had someone come up to me after an event one time and say, you know, I, that whole playlist thing doesn't work for me because I only listen to audiobooks. And I said, oh, well, I beg your pardon, good sir. <laughs> If you're going to say something that condescending, you should wear a monocle. Just heads up for later. <laughs> I'm not an audiobook guy when I'm in the field. I do have some positive audios that I like to plug in and play in between my songs. But have a playlist so that you don't take any chances. Any chances. Now, on the way home, you need to have a victory song. Why? That way you cement in with that music that feeling of winning. So whatever that song is, pick it. You also need a rebound song. That way, if you start to slide, if you miss a few appointments, you need a song that will get you recentered, get your mind straight again, get you back in a positive place so that you're back on attack. Now, I was in high school in the 90s, so the Smashing Pumpkins is one of my favorite bands. My, my, my rebound song is Today by the Smashing Pumpkins. I'm serious, like any bad thing can happen. And I put that song on and I'm right in like 45 seconds. The energy of the song is great, the message is great. Pick your own, I'm just giving you an example. Does that make sense? But you gotta have something you can go to if you start to slide. There's no reason to have a whole night of appointments go bad on you. 
Every appointment is mutually exclusive. They didn't all meet right before you came out in the field. <laughs> Bob here. Oh, great. You're here, Bob. Now, you're here at 6 o'clock. What's your plan? Well, you know, I was thinking about... <laughs> they didn't, they're all mutually exclusive. So have a rebound plan to get yourself right. Here's the other thing. When it comes to protecting, limit the calls and texts you'll take. If you're married, take your spouse in the field with you so they can see what it's like. Once I took Holly in the field, she understood what it was like, and she knew that calling me and asking how's it going is not helpful. <laughs> Does that make sense? But unless your spouse sees that, it's going to be hard for them to know how to support you. So anybody that's negative or could potentially be negative, don't take their call. Jeremiko Edwards, one of those, I can't, I can't wait to see you speak, Jeremiko. I was so fired up by that. Um, I'm so proud of you, dude. He was in the factory, and then he started selling here. And he would struggle because mama would call or so-and-so would call. And I said, in the factory, if you were on the line and, you got a, and mama called the factory, did they go, Jeremiko, your mother is on the phone. Uh, no, it's the left foot this time. Yeah, can you come up and take, no. He said, no, just keep working. And he said, ah, I got it. As soon as that clicked in, can't take calls of anybody that could potentially be negative. And really, unless it's, I mean, if the end of the world happens, I have relatives that will inform me and I'll let you know. So you don't have to worry about anybody <laughs> letting you know that the world is ending. Does that make sense? Be very disciplined about that. Last thing, jam your schedule full. Jam it full. You need more appointments than you can physically get to. Why? That way you have zero gaps. Gaps always get filled with negativity, doubt, and worry. When you have a gap in activity, that's when it happens. Nobody's been running on a treadmill at the gym at full speed and gone, you know what, I think I'm depressed now. <laughs> no, why? Because they're moving, they're in action. Does that make sense? The doubt can't creep in, the negativity can't creep in, the worry can't creep in, especially if you're brand new. You don't need to be worrying about all the stuff that's going on in your head. Cram your schedule full. It'll also keep you from sitting with um, morons. When your schedule's full, you're like, I ain't about to take this. I'm out. I'm already 45 minutes late for my next appointment. I learned this lesson on Ross Craggan Road in Asheville, North Carolina. If you want to come to Asheville, I'll take you to this place, to this apartment. Because um, <laughs> I was selling a policy. I was trying my best. And the guy's just an idiot. And you say, Stephen, that's not kind to call people idiots. You haven't met this guy. He was an idiot. <laughs> By the way, I know statistics. If there's enough appointments in a day, I'm going to have three idiots. Like, it's just, I just don't want to spend more idiot time than I have to. I try to limit my idiot intake, if at all possible. And I said, look, ma'am, I'm going to apologize to you and those kids, but I'm not going to be able to help you all tonight because I'm a professional and I need to be treated as such, and that's not happening here tonight. So I apologize to you and the kids. I mean, I'm throwing hard shade right there at the guy, right? Bill, by the way, if you do this, just know where the front door is so you don't accidentally open a coat closet on your way out. That'll kill your street cred, I'm just telling you. <laughs> like, well, I will see myself. <laughs> I was so proud of this lady. When I said that, she said, no, you stay. She turned to him and she said, you shut up. And I was like, oh. <laughs> It's going to be about 150 a month, I feel it. <laughs> How much repentance would you like to buy, sir? <laughs> Here's the point. I never would have done that if that was my only appointment and if I didn't have another appointment for three hours. I would have sat there, let that guy beat me up, and I'd have been so pathetic and beat up by the time I got to the next appointment. I, the guy would be like, hey, I'm glad you're here. I really need to buy this. I'd be like, well, you don't win them all. <laughs> Right? Messed me up, right? But because I had too many appointments, I was like, I ain't staying here with this moron. <laughs> Make sense? All right. Next principle. Harness the power of ritual. Why? Rituals negate negative energy and emotions, unproductive nerves. It, it negates all that. That's why if you watch a football game and you see a place kicker, they do the weirdest thing, right? You ever seen that the, at the end of the game? The, this kick is for all the marbles, and he does something like this. It's like, you could have just walked there, man. What are you doing? 
It's his ritual. He's sinking himself in with his ritual. I do everything the same way. I open the door with the same hand. I, I wave with my right hand. I open the door with my left hand. I grab a breath strip with my right hand. Key point, we're not always on point with our breath, so don't take any chances. <laughs> also, try not to eat a lot of onions or garlic before the field. That just, or a lot of cold cuts, you know, just, you don't need that vibe. <laughs> I took a guy in a ride along. It's like, did you eat a whole red onion like just prior to? <laughs> Grab the breast strip with my right hand. I wave. I get out of the car. I wave with my left hand. I walk to the pad. I walk up. I wave with my right hand. I knock on the bottom of the door. Anybody know why I knock on the bottom of the door? Because I think it's funny. Because <laughs> I want them to picture like on the other side of the door, there's a Oompa Loompa here to sell them life insurance. <laughs> You know, like, oompa loompa doopa dee doo, I've got a policy for you, right? And so when I knock on the bottom of the door, all that goes through my head, and then I laugh, and I think it's funny, and I'm in a great mood when they open the door. And the looks you get from some people are funny, especially this one. <laughs> I'm like, let's go, we're about to write a policy. <laughs> all right. Principle three, you're in charge, be in charge. It's like, it's like most people in their life, they act like, like the ref at a WWE match. They're kind of involved, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like lame parents. Anybody seen lame parents before? Like the, this, this kid, he wears, a, he wears a dinosaur costume. 12 years old, why? Well, because he's a dinosaur. No, he's a strange little kid. <laughs> I can fix that for you, by the way. I said, hey, we'll turn your backyard into a paddock, just like we'll give him the Jurassic Park therapy. We'll leave him a goat on a chain out there. We'll see how fast the little fellow wants to be a human again. That and other strategies are available in my parenting book in the store. Quick disclaimer, my, parent book, my parenting book cannot be used in a trial, so just you're in charge, be in charge, right? You want to grab that parent, go, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? Be in charge. You're in charge, be in charge. Where are we going to do it? We're going to do it at the kitchen table. Why? Because I'm in charge. I'm not going to sit on that sectional sofa that it seems like everybody has, and I'm not going to sit in the middle of that while you watch TV and try and sell, oh no, we're going to the kitchen table or I'm going gone. Why? Because I'm in charge. Marcus stole my illustration yesterday. I was watching his talk and I was like, you better not say that one. <laughs> and then he said the doctor one. That's so true, right? If the doctor was like, hey, would you mind too terribly to get naked and um, just put this little piece of paper on and just wait for me for an odd amount of time, would that be okay? <laughs> would that be good for you? No, but a stranger tells you to and you get naked. <laughs> so if you get naked for a stranger, they can find their kitchen table. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right. Here's the key. When you're, when you're inside and you're in charge, be friendly, but keep some professional friction. I, I, when I coach new agents, they're like, oh, my appointments went great. They fed me dinner. I was there for four hours. They loved me. I just got to go back on the third Tuesday of the fifth week of February to get that check. Here's what happened. We're on this journey from stranger, we can't get to overly casual or we'll lose the sale. There has to be that professional friction. Comfortable and in charge is what you're shooting for. The strength is in the middle. Make sense? Control the selling environment. You decide where we're gonna do the sale, you will not do it in front of a TV. We're not gonna do it in front of any distractions. Marcus covered all that well yesterday. I'm not, I was gonna go through that, but Marcus did it yesterday for me. Where you sit, all that, that what he said. By the way, that was some awesome training, brother. Awesome training. You had three things that I wrote down, like questions you asked. I was like, oh man, I remember that from one of my talks in the future. <laughs> Here's the main point with this. Don't be so afraid of missing the sale that you miss the sale. 
That's what happens. Most missed sales are simply missed because someone was afraid to miss the sale. Don't be so afraid of missing the sale that you missed the sale. You didn't have that sale to begin with anyway. So you might as well give it your all. Does that make sense? And by the way, I love it when an appointment is getting sideways at the end because I've got a list of things I've been wanting to say in the house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, are you sure you want to go here? I've been preparing for this, friend. <laughs> It'd be a lot easier if you bought this policy. <laughs> the guy said one time, said, we need to pray about that. And I said, well, let us join hands. <laughs> they said, son, I'm not kidding. I was like, apparently I'm not either, because I, I, there's no way out of this. <laughs> yeah, by, limit the prayer jokes you make on, in appointments, just as a heads up. Principle number four, you got to connect before you try to convince. That's the number one thing I see parents screw up. They go straight into scolding and yelling instead of connecting before they try and convince their child of something. Now, to, con to, to connect in the house, there's a simple 3C checklist I'm going to give you. And once you check these boxes, you're in good shape. First is commonality. You've got to find a commonality. Doesn't have to be a big commonality. It doesn't have to be like, oh my God, our social security numbers are the same except for the last number, which is only one number apart. We have so much in common. <laughs> it can be something as simple as, oh, my sister was born in May. By the way, my sister's been born in a lot of months because I can't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> is it a fib if you genuinely can't remember? I, I don't think so. <laughs> I think there's plausible deniability there. Number two, compliment. Shortest distance between two people is a sincere compliment. Compliment them. Find something you can genuinely compliment them about. I remember the first sales training I went through before I found the Alliance. Literally, my district manager said, now the first thing you gotta do when you get in these people's houses, just find you know, something stupid and just say you like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okie doke. So that doesn't work. Genuine compliment. Genuine compliment. If they're married, how long they've been married? That's awesome, congratulations. You know, me and my wife are trying to go the distance too. It's so inspiring to see another couple like y'all. Well, how long do they have to be married for that compliment? Any length of time. Why, time is relative. If you don't think so, let's go spend some time at my mother-in-law's house. Any amount of time can be a long time. <laughs> Number three, comedy. You gotta share a laugh. Nothing bonds people together better than laughing together. Every time you've laughed as a group, as we've laughed as a group this weekend, don't you just, you feel it. Pay attention to that through the rest of the day. I mean, unless the speakers are boring later. Um, <laughs> no, we got some good guys coming up. I can't wait to see Gareth's talk. When we laugh together, it bonds us. Same thing in a house. Find some joke you can share. Find something you can share. And it doesn't have to be a great joke, by the way. Whether or not the laughter is like uproariously loud or whether it's like, oh, that's pretty good. It's the same bond. Does that make sense? So don't get caught in, I have to, um, hang on, I, this is inspiring teaching. This is relatable teaching. <laughs> like my favorite thing at every convention is to think about Jessica watching the B-roll that they take because every time I can, I sneak something in. That's funny, all right. Here's the big key. Once you've connected, use words of connection. I no longer say I or me or you. Everything is us and we. People like us, we. People like us, we. Use the words of connection. As soon as you check those three boxes, then you can no longer say you or I because then you're putting the distance back between you. It's us and we, people like us. Here's the connection test. Did they walk you to your car? Did they hug you? Every appointment, did they walk you to your car and did they hug you? If they did, you connected. Principle number five, Marcus gave us some good stuff on this as well. We gotta move them from logical processing to emotional processing. Here's the key. When you get there, they're going to be processing everything in streams of words. Does that make sense? That's how that's, they're going to be thinking linear streams of words. What we've got to do is move them to processing emotionally. That is when in our brain, we stop processing linear streams of words and we start processing movies. 
That's when we're processing emotionally. That's what you're trying to get done there. Does that make sense? So when you're in the house, we're gonna go through this in a minute in the appointment flow, the stories part is where we flip that switch. Principle number six, be purposeful with your words. Think about every word you say. Now don't get crazy and just like, I can't go to an appointment because it's too much. Just be purposeful with your words. Here's a key. Soft words, I'm sorry, soft, strong words, soft tones. I said it backwards, that would have really screwed everybody up. I'm saying soft words with strong tones. <laughs> That's great that you want to help your family. <laughs> I'm really glad I can be here. Strike it, reverse it, I said it backwards. Now, do you understand the ish part now? Do you understand why that's important? <laughs> Use strong words. Use strong words, soft tones. Here's the key. Word count, less is more. If you look at a top producer and you look at the word count, like if you had a, 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 the typer lady at the court, uh, topography? Stenography. I knew it was a graphy. I just couldn't figure out which one. <laughs> if you looked at a stenographer's report of a top producer, their word count versus a lower producer, is way less. Now I can tell you where I learned less words is more, less words is better. We were in the Caribbean, Holly and I were in a villa on the beachfront, and she's laying there. I had been like killing it that day. I hadn't done anything immature or annoying or offensive in like literally an hour, so I'm on my game. The moonlight is coming through the, the, the curtains as the fans moving the curtains is draping across her face, and I stroke her cheek. And I say, baby, you're so beautiful in the dark. <laughs> now what I should have said was nothing. <laughs> so less words, better. Yeah, women have a weird reaction to that. It's so strange. <laughs> I'm gonna give you two keys here on your word choice. Use words people want to be known for and link them to actions you need them to take. Meaning words like loyal, like love, like courage, like honor. Does that make sense? If you look at a, if you look at, at, at a top performer's uh, word count, those words, it's all over it. It's all over those words. The, you can't keep track of how many times I'll say love or honor or commitment or loyalty. Man, there's no greater mark of loyalty than taking care of those we leave behind. I respect the heck out of that. Those kind of phrases. Because people want to be known as that. What's the action we need them to take? Fill out an application. Make sense? Here's another trick. Compliment in advance for the things you need them to do. Compliment them in advance. I can, let me tell you, if I'm sitting with a couple, I'm setting him up to be the king of the castle or to sleep on the couch for a period of no less than two weeks. Because I'm gonna compliment in advance. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I respect the heck out of that. And I'll tell the wife, you know, you got one of the good ones. Most men aren't willing to have these conversations. That's why a lot of men die without life insurance. But you got one of the good ones. All throughout. And Pausing is massive. I'm going to go through this in a minute when I go through tonalities. Pausing is massive. Let silence set in. When they tell you stuff, it may be the first time they've formulated that thought. Like they know the, the reasons for life insurance, but it may be the first time that they formulated that thought and went, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. The reason I responded was because Uncle Hank died. And when Uncle Hank died, like they're going to be connecting dots that they may not have necessarily connected, even though they've been connected on the subconscious level. You're moving it into the conscious level, so you've got to give time for that to set in. Which is also why there's less word count. Lots of pauses. This is a trick that you could use for good or bad. This question's magic. Does that make sense? Like, I could be like, guys, I think we should go down to the lobby and let's burn this place down. Does that make sense? <laughs> I 
I say, does that make sense so much that Holly will be like, don't you sell me? <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm not. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, number seven. Intonation and tone changes are massive. If you don't think tone matters, think about it next time you talk to your dog. What do we say to our dog? Who's a good girl? Are you a good girl? Now change the tone. Who's a good girl? <laughs> Are you a good girl? <laughs> if you go potty, I'll give you a treat. <laughs> tone matters, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you go from an adorable dog owner to somebody call the police. <laughs> So I'm going to buzz through these. <laughs> if you remember nothing else, if you go potty, I'll give you a treat. <laughs> Here's the tones that you need to work through in the house. I really care. That's the genuineness. I really care. That's a very soft tone. I really care. Scarcity. <sighs> oh, man. I can't believe that happened to your aunt. All right? Absolute certainty. That's where we go to fill out the app. That's where we lead with I'm in charge. That sets the stage for them to feel secure so they can open up. Utter sincerity. You've got to be able to be, that's why the emotional prepare is so important so that way you get to that real utter sincerity tone when you're talking to them. You're not talking at them, you're having a conversation and utter sincerity has got to flow through. Reasonable man. Does that make sense is a big reasonable man tone. Does that make sense? In other words, nothing that I'm asking you to do here is, ir is, not, is, is ir unreasonable. Does that make sense? Implied obviousness. Oh, that's why y'all have me here tonight because of what happened to your Aunt Mary. Implied obviousness. I feel your pain. That's a lot of time, not even a, a word. Ooh. I'm processing. You will hear noises in the house when I'm selling. A lot of, hmm, okay. <laughs> mm. That's, I'm thinking it through for you. Does that make sense? It makes them feel safe. All right, so let's get to the flow of the appointment. Here's the flow of the appointment. We start with stories. Marcus talked about this yesterday as well. Here's what I need you to have. I need you to have two stories. I need you to have a tragic life insurance story and I need you to have a life insurance saves the day story. Here's why. You're gonna ask them to tell their story. You'll say, hey, uh, you know, I, my job is to take, take stuff off your worry plate. I just really wanna know what drove this. Everybody, absolute certainty, everybody that responds to these has a story. You guys lost someone and, and, and they didn't have life insurance, or you lost someone and they did. What's y'all's story? Because I want to make sure I take everything possible off your worry plate tonight. Now, you're going to have to pause. If you talk next, you lose. Wait. If it's a couple, 99 times out of 100, she's going to speak up first. They're going to share a story. <laughs> I was just looking at my notes. <laughs> It says pervy dog talk. That was a reminder for that joke. <laughs> you got to think through your notes so that when you're seeing them, you don't start laughing at what you're, when you're trying to talk. Like, think that through better next time. You share an opposite story to what they share. Why? Here's why. Contrasting emotions create pull. Think about it. The movie you watched, when the hero is all but vanquished, and yet somehow, against all odds, right? I mean, like a wrestling match, right? He's down for the count. One, two, like WWE wrestling, not like, you know, wrestling wrestling. He's down for the count. They're counting him off. And then, oh, his leg starts to move. His hand starts to move. And the crowd goes wild. Why? We love contrasting emotions. It creates pull. That's why you've got to have an opposite story. If you don't have one or the other, just dig deeper. You got it somewhere in your family. 
You got it somewhere in your family. Practice telling the story. So when they tell their story, you go, oh. 99 times out of 100, it's a tragic story. Oh, man, that's terrible. I'm so sorry that your family went through that. You know, I, I got to ask, I mean, do you think your Uncle Hank would do different if he could do it over? Mm. Yeah, I'm sure he was a good man. That, I'm sure he was a good man. I know it. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Well, we can't fix that. But we can keep this from ever happening to your family. That's the story transition. That's the story transition. If they tell a positive story, you got to tell a train wreck story. Why? Positive story says life insurance is awesome, isn't it? If I tell a positive story, then I say life insurance is awesome, isn't it? And we're stuck. I've got to tell a tragic story so that the, the thought flow is life insurance is awesome, but the time is now. Does that make, make sense? Got to have both stories. Now, once we go through that, we get to situation evaluation. Once we've swapped stories, we go to situation evaluation. The question is, let me ask you this, Mary. Oh, by the way, the stories works, final expense, mortgage protection works the same. Final expense with a single person. She's going to tell a story about one of her siblings that died and didn't have life insurance and how they had to be on GoFundMe and all that. She's going to tell one of those stories, right? So it works, all that works the same regardless of the selling situation. If you're sitting with a couple, when I get to situation evaluation, the question is, let me ask you this, Mary. I just want to make sure I, I got my mind around what we're trying to get done here. Is what you're telling me that if something happened to Hank tomorrow, God forbid on his way home from work, someone crosses the double yellow line and Hank don't come home, and you're talking to a state trooper not long after that, God forbid that happened tomorrow, is what you're telling me is that things will start to get tough on you financially? Yeah. Oh, man, okay. I get why y'all have me out here today. Okay, that makes sense. I, I get it. And by the way, you got one of the good ones. I'm going right back to all those all this principles you kind of see coming out as I'm selling. That's why I want to go over those first. You got one of the good ones. But let me ask you, I just want to understand the urgency here. How long after... Hank's funeral would things really start to get tough? We're, we're, we're movies. Does that make sense? We're no longer streams of words. We're movies. She's picturing her walking, herself walking out of the funeral home. She's replaying previous funeral home visits in her head. Now we're processing emotionally. It's time to go. The key is depth of question there. Here's what you don't want to do. Well, what were you guys hoping to accomplish? Well, we was just hoping to get something in place in case something was to happen. Oh, Let's go. No! What do you mean in case something happens? We're all dying just at different speeds. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta get more depth or they're not gonna move. You gotta get depth. Depth is the key on situation evaluation. I like to go at least three strong questions deep. Once you get there, we're simply picking out a product. We're simply picking out a product and a price point that fits for them. If you do these first two steps right, there will be zero resistance once you get to the actual sale, once you get to the paperwork, it's just a matter of what they can afford and doing some paperwork once you're past step two. Once you've swapped stories, and by the way, the, con the connection thing, you gotta do that before you start, otherwise they're not gonna share their story with you. you see, see how all the principles come into play with this flow? Once you share the stories, once you do the situation evaluation, now we're just picking out price and product. So the solution part, I don't have a lot of content there because that's just <laughs> which one can you afford? What can you afford? Now, the last part of the flow is vital. That's solidify. Works the same way whether you're doing a paper application or an e-app. We've got everything done. The application is done. If it's an e-app, I'm getting ready to press submit. If it's a paper app, I'm going to hand the app back to them. I'm going to go, now, guys, I just want us to do one more thing here tonight. I want to let you know how much I respect what y'all are doing. I respect it so much. You know, a lot of people put this off till it's too late. I mean, you go on GoFundMe.com, now we know your family won't be one of those families. I respect the heck out of what y'all are doing here tonight. It's tough to have these conversations. I respect y'all for, for, for doing it. I mean, taking care of each other, I mean, that's, 
when we're gone and we're taking care of the people we leave behind, that's, that's loyalty. You can't, I mean, I respect the heck out of it. I respect it so much that I'm willing to say this. I'm glad that what's important tonight is important tonight. And then I named that specific thing we came to. I'm glad what's important tonight is important tonight. Taking care of her and those kids, God forbid the worst happen tomorrow. I respect that. You've got to call back to what they said they wanted to solve here. This is key. Or if it's final expense, ah, you know, making sure that your funeral is not one where people are fighting over money. Making sure, you're, making sure your grandkids can grieve and celebrate your life instead of, you know, figuring out how we're going to come up with. I, I respect the heck out of that. That's, that. that's incredible. Most people, they wait too long. I respect the heck out of what you're doing. I respect it so much that I'm willing to say this. I'm glad that what's important tonight is important tonight. But if you think that at any point in the future, it's no longer going to be important, and then I call back to that again, whatever it was, the situation, if you think that's no longer going to be important, I'd rather just leave this with you, or I'd rather not press send on this. But if what's important tonight is going to be important from here on out, I'm happy to take this case and to go to work for you. Once they say go, that's solid. Here's the key. I need them to see that debit and not think a thought. I need them to feel a feeling. Does that make sense? I need them to see that debit and go, okay, at least the life insurance cleared this month. If you do that part right, they'll call you freaking out if the draft bounces. Because they felt a feeling, they didn't think a thought. It's not a line item to be eliminated. Does that make sense? If you do that, I mean, the guys, my top people, their persistency is in the 95% plus by doing this. And think about it, if, if you have a case stay on the book for three months, we failed that family. If you have a case stay on the book for 30, 30 days, we failed that family. If you have a case stay on the book for two years and fall, we failed that family. Does that make sense? That's why I've got to get it locked down. Now, I'll tell you this, if you do this flow right, if you apply the principles, you're going to have so much thinking fun selling, you'll understand why I think sales is fun. You're going to feel so fulfilled. You're going to need your celebration jam for the ride home. <laughs> I'm hearing mine in my head right now, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's an incredibly fulfilling process. So that's the principles, that's the flow. Now here's what I want to give you. I want to give you some stuff so that you can take it and perform at a high level for a long period of time. I don't want you to be one of these people that performs for a high, period of, a high level for a small period of time and then, and then flails out. I don't want you to perform for a high level of, uh, uh, at a high level for a period of time and, and then get bored. And then I, I want you to perform at a high level for a long time. So that's what I want to share with you last. Five basics to take all this and to go kill it for a long period of time. Number one, gratitude. We all got to operate from a frame of gratitude. If you can't find something to be grateful for, I'm going to give you some easy examples. Now, I don't know if all of you have my background, but as a child at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, I was named the junior astronaut. So I know a lot about space. <laughs> yeah, I was as surprised as you are. I was like, wow, junior astronaut, I, okay, let's go. If you look at the universe, it pretty much sucks for light years everywhere else. But we get to live on planet Earth. That's pretty amazing. I'll give you another one. You and I are not pandas. Why is that important? Because pandas struggle to breed. Most pandas would rather eat than breed. That is not the case with most humans. So here's my running theory. It's because pandas look just like each other. Like if Holly looked just like me, we would probably have zero kids. So I wake up every day and I go, man, I'm glad I'm not a panda. It's a great nickname, but I'd rather be a human. I'll give you another one. We get to choose what we do. That to me is awesome. What if you had your job randomly selected for you? What if, what, if, what if the two dice that popped up at the government job assigning facility was garbage man and mime? You would be a mime garbage man. 
Do you understand how tough a situation that is? You got a crappy job and you can't even tell anybody about it. <laughs> and you say, why would you make a mime joke? There could be a mime here. And I was like, I would love to see that. <laughs> and if you make a mime mad, the escape strategy is pretty simple. You just keep throwing walls up in front of them. <laughs> They'll be all pissed off. I can go all day, mime. Let's go. <laughs> Got to make sure we're in a grateful state more than we're not. That's why the rebound song is so important. When we're grateful, we're operating out of abundance and we're operating out of creativity. Does that make sense? That's how we sell a lot of insurance, is being abundant and creative. When we're grateful, we're there. If we're not, then we're not. We're not going to be creative. We're not going to think of really cool things to say in the house that get a sale done. We've got to start and stay in a grateful position as long as we possibly can. And when we slide, have a gratitude exercise, have your top two, three. I gave you my top three. You can use those. You can find your own. Hey, dealer's choice. But you've got to have some stuff that will get your mind right and get you back into that grateful, expansive attitude. Number two, simplify to amplify. If you want to perform at a high level for a long period of time, you've got to simplify the things in your life. Like you can't be like, I've got friends that they know everything about the 2036 recruiting class that their current favorite college football team is looking at. Like, well, he's in kindergarten now, but you should see this kid's closing speed. I think we're going to get this one. You know what I'm saying? Or they're all obsessed with news, or they're all obsessed. You can't be spread out like that and be great at any of it. That's why most people's lives are not impactful. They spread all their good over too many things. Anybody got relatives like that? It's like the only question on your mind is, what are they going to be uh, upset about this time? <laughs> because they're always upset. Right, let me tell you something. That, that pissed me off. I just, I got to tell you. I gotta, I gotta. <laughs> By the way, mental elevator music is a great coping strategy I use. They think I'm listening. But upstairs, I'm somewhere between the moon and New York City. <laughs> That's terrible. They said, what? Or sketch comedy therapy, which is another thing I do. I try and think of who would play this person um, <laughs> in my movie about my life. All right. Simplify to amplify. Reduce the things that you're all excited about. Reduce the things that you get all into. Reduce the things that you get upset about. If it takes a lot to upset you, you can perform at a high level. If you're easily upset or offended, it's going to be hard for you to perform at a higher level. Why? Because you're going to slip from number one. There's a very small, things, a very small list of things that get me upset anymore. Very small. People apologize like, hey, man, I just want to apologize to you. I didn't mean to say it like that. And I was like, oh. In fact, I told one of my people yesterday, you're going to learn I'm an easy friend because I have a short memory and it takes a lot to offend me. Simplify to amplify. Simplify. When you simplify, you'll be able to amplify the stuff that matters in life. I only really want to be good in about three areas of life. Does that make sense? I just want to be good at three things, my main three priorities. Number three, seek bigger challenges. You ever wonder why it's so hard for someone that's simply just personally producing at a high level to stay at that high level? Because they're not seeking a bigger challenge. What's a bigger challenge? Building an organization. Seeking a bigger challenge. Here's how that works. Let me show you something. So, the left side is challenges, meaning the, the size or the level challenge you're willing to take on. The bottom part is skills. The skills you've got to take on that challenge. Now your skills are always going to be growing. So you start selling with us, you're going to get really good at it. Why? Because anybody can get really good at it. You're going to get really, oops, oh, hang on, there we go. Um, <laughs> I got to press it three times to get it to work and then sometimes it just works. <laughs> By the way, just a little piece of advice. If you would lower what you think a miracle is, you'll be a lot happier. Like I'm like, oh, oh another miracle. Another miracle today. Excitement and fulfillment is on that constantly moving arc where you're taking on bigger challenges as you're getting better. What lives below the arc? Danger. Boredom. 
which leads us to distractions and bad habits. That's why someone that gets good at something and doesn't seek higher challenges often implodes. They got bored, they got distracted, they picked up some bad habits. That's where boredom lives, where we stop seeking higher challenges. When that arc flats, you're gonna get bored. We gotta keep going up. What lives up here? Anxiety, where we're taking on a challenge that we don't have the skills for yet. I'll take anxiety over boredom every time. Anxiety can be productive, productive anxiety. Boredom always turns destructive. Especially if you're like me, because like it takes all I can do to not take all of my money and turn it into gold coins and then bury it in my yard somewhere and then make a treasure map out of a paper bag from a grocery store and then hire an acting troupe to dress up as pirates and give them a treasure map to go find my gold in my yard while I sit in my son's canoe in our pool with a telescope. <laughs> you understand why I can't be bored, you understand? <laughs> Number four, have fun in the journey. I'll tell you where I learned this. We were flying to do a meeting. We were going between Portland, Oregon and Sacramento, California. We're flying and I'm just in my zone, you know, reading my personal development books or watching cartoons on my iPad. Doesn't matter, I'm on a personal growth journey. <laughs> and you feel this, <clears throat> like, I've flown a lot, that's not happened yet. And it's just stuff pouring out of one of the engines. I mean, we're, we're in bad shape. Like the main flight attendant, she did not understand this point, uh, or he did not understand this point because he's at the front taking us through the emergency procedures and he's crying. <laughs> and then, <laughs> when we say brace, brace, brace. <laughs> I was like, you don't get to cry if you're a flight attendant. Your job is to make this seem normal to the scene of the crash. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole way down, I just want you going. <laughs> right? That's what I want from a flight attendant. Because I want to think what's happening is normal. And then I'll see you on the other side. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this flight attendant did not get it. Fortunately, there was a good flight attendant on the plane. She was a supervisor. And she like took the thing away from him. She's like, you go sit down. He's like, folks, listen, this is a serious situation. I need you to follow exactly what I'm saying. I'm like, this lady's awesome. And then I'm like, if we survive this and she Top Gun high fives me when I walk off the plane, this will be the greatest day in the history of my days. <laughs> but then I was like, wait, you still gotta survive. <laughs> Old man sitting next to me, the whole way down, he's going, woo, woo, woo. And I was like, my man, what's up? He's like, I'm 85 years old. I've never seen a plane crash. And I was, <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're gonna see this one from the inside. <laughs> so he got my mind right and I put on my playlist for emergencies on flights. You should have a playlist for every potential emergency situation. You don't wanna die with a bad song in your head. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did not wanna be in a plane crash and then have the Gwen Stefani song about bananas in my head. You know, I was like. It's not what I want my last thought to be, so I just put on my headphones and listen to Beth Midler's Wind Beneath My Wings the whole ride down. <laughs> and I thought that would be funny if it did go bad. Then on the news, they could be like, 146 passengers were killed on impact and one passenger of severe irony. <laughs> what do you mean? Have fun in the journey. Let me give you a key phrase. If we're gonna laugh about it later, you guys knew it already. If we're gonna laugh about it later, just laugh about it now. You're, here's, here's the way I look at my life. I'm simply adventure collecting. I'm gonna, I'm trying to collect the coolest set of adventures ever. So everything that happens, the crazy appointments, the appointment where the lady grabbed my butt on the way out. And this lady could have bench pressed Brandon Beal. That's how big this, I mean. She might have been able to preach her curl, Brandon. She, she said, Mr. Davies, are you a married man? And she could have palmed me like a basketball. You know what I'm saying? I was like, well, if I survive this, this is going to be a fun story to tell. <laughs> Checklist, highlighter in right pocket. That's all the weaponry I have on me. <laughs> Stabbing neck with highlighter, try to jump out the window. 
It's one of those houses too where they got 38 door locks. <laughs> you come in for the appointment and then they're like. <laughs> so, Man, I hope I sell because I could get murdered. Oh man, I ruined the joke. Here's what I was going to do for the last point. No, oh, never mind. <laughs> so my plan was, if you listen to my notes, it says head game. Again, impactful teaching. <laughs> Got to have good picks. Listen to the right voices. Andy started off on this. And I was like, oh my God, that ties right into my talk. Listen to the right voices. Number one, Choose better voices. So I'll step outside of business for a minute. I want to be a great husband. Does that make sense? Like, I really try and you go, but you also do a lot of dumb stuff. I'm like, that's why I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to mastery-ish it. I need voices of great husbands in my head. Does that make sense? If I want to be a positive, impactful person, I need positive, impactful voices in my head. So that's the first part is listen to the right voices. Choose the voices you listen to. Low performers, they let anybody tell them anything. That's why they don't ever outperform their current peer group, because they all coach each other. Does that make sense? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I remember I was working construction for like two weeks after high school. That's when I learned I didn't want to work construction. I was like, this is kind of pokey and dirty and... <laughs> we got to lift all that stuff? I'm going to go get an insurance license. And on the job site, these two guys' lives are a wreck, and the one's giving them marital advice. I'll tell you what I do, man. What you got to do is you got to look her in the eyes, and you got I'm like, <laughs> I might be 18 years old, but I know whatever he says next is a bad idea. <laughs> be on purpose with the voices you listen to. The second thing is what Andy started off on. Let future you get you in better shape. Because keep in mind, there's three yous. Current you just showed up. Current you's like, what are we going to do? Past you's like, hey man, I got an idea. Future you's like, don't listen to that guy. Like, I got buddies. I know exactly what they're doing today. Because past them is coaching them. They're like, oh, Sunday, football's on. What should we do? <laughs> I got an idea. And then they're going to wake up in the bushes at the huddle house with... 27 missed calls and half of a bush heavy left, you know? It's a bush heavy for North Carolina term. For people not from North Carolina, that's a, the opposite of bush light. There's only bush light, bush heavy. That's where he's going to wake up. Why? Because past him said, you know what we do on Sundays, brother? Future him's going, dude, we're never going to retire. Also, we might end up in jail. So when you're listening to the voices, it's important to not just pick the right voices to feed into you, but do your future self a favor. I'm so proud of every single one of you guys for being here. Future you saw you come here, and future you is like, you the man, thank you. I'm so proud of every single one yeah, Give yourselves a round of applause. Future you is smiling because you did, you did what you did by being here. Future you is smiling because you paid attention. Future you is going, hey man, good job not being in the hallway, being in where the content is. Future you says, hey man, good job taking notes. Future you, tomorrow is going to be like, hey bro, we're going to get to work on that stuff? Past you is like, bro man, you're, you, we're young, we got our health, what do you want with a job, man? Future you is going, don't listen to him, don't listen to him. Dude, dude, come this way, come this way, come this way. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to invite you to do it with me, let's listen to future us, let's put the right stuff in our head, let's go out and perform at a high level, and let's absolutely make the Alliance the biggest, baddest entity integrity has ever seen. Y'all with me?